Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the two noble kinsmen and we have a lot to get through today because we get to hear from Amelia in Act 5, Scene 3, but yesterday we just finished Act 5, Scene 1, so there's a whole scene that we need to fill fill ourselves in on. But Act 5, Scene 1, it was sort of the pregame show where we had Palamon and Arcite and Amelia praying to their various gods to support them in this fight to not touch the pyramid. And Palamon and Arcite both left that feeling good, feeling like they had the support of Mars and Venus. And Amelia's plea to the goddess Diana of, um, the goddess of the hunt, like a rose grew and then fell off the tree. So she has no idea what that means and thinks that maybe she's supposed to be alone or that somebody's gonna die. So that was act five, scene one. But in Act 5, Scene 2, we have to check in again with the jailer and his daughter and the wooer and all of that. Because if you remember, they decided that the wooer should pretend that he's Palamon in order to try to bring the jailer's daughter back to her senses. So they're checking in and the doctor's like, how's everything going? And the jailer's like, you know, it seems to be going pretty well. And, and, the, and my daughter seems almost convinced that the wooer is Palamon. You know, we've had enough other people talking about it. But the thing is, she's like, she's asking him to kiss her. And what if she goes so far as to asking him to sleep with her because it's Palamon? And the doctor's like, well, he should do it because that, you know, he needs to go along with whatever it is that she asks of him. And the jailer's like, I don't know that I like that course of action. And the doctor's like, yeah, he, if, if she wants to sleep with him, then they should sleep together. And the wooer's like, I guess, I guess I could do that. And the jailer's daughter comes in and she's still kind of talking nonsense, but it's more focused nonsense on, on Palamon and how wonderful he is and hasn't everybody met him and how far is it to the end of the world and all this sort of thing. And she, in addition to thinking that the wooer is Palamon, she starts to think that the doctor is our sight. And so the doctor plays the part of our site and is talking up Palamon and all that sort of thing. And in this, in this whole role play thing, the wooer as Palamon agrees to marry her. And she's like, and then we get to kiss and then we'll get to sleep together. And he's like, yep, yep, cool. And then a messenger comes in and uh, gets on the doctor and the jailer's case because they are supposed to go watch this whole fight to not touch the pyramid thing. So they go off to do that and, and the jailer's daughter and the wooer continue on with their wooing, much to the jailer's chagrin. And that's the end of act five, scene two. In act five, scene three, we have um, the, like the, the battle is about to, or the, the games, whatever you wanna call it, the fight, the, the pyramid thing is gonna be happening in the ring over there. But we have Theseus and Hippolyta and Amelia and Perithius and some others. And they're like, come on, Amelia, you have to go and, and see this. And she's like, no, I really don't. I don't wanna watch this. I don't wanna encourage this. I think that this is a terrible idea. I would rather be dead than watch these two men fight each other to the death and then have one of them actually have to die on my behalf and they're all like, no, but like you're the reason why they're fighting. So you need to be there to encourage them to fight well. And she's like, no, because I don't want them to fight well. I don't want them to be fighting at all. And there's a, a bunch of back and forth and pretty much everybody's like, come on, Amelia, you gotta go and see this. And she's like, no, I am not going. And they're like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll go watch. So they all leave and she has a moment on stage by herself. And she says, our site is, gently visaged, yet his eye is like an engine bent or a sharp weapon in a soft sheath. Mercy and manly courage are bedfellows in his visage. Palamon has a most menacing aspect. His brow is graved and seems to bury what it frowns on. Yet sometimes tis not so, but alters to the quality of his thoughts. Long time his eye will dwell upon his object melancholy becomes him nobly so does our sight's mirth but palamon's sadness is a kind of mirth so mingled as if mirth did make him sad and sadness merry those darker humors that stick misbecomingly on others on them live in fair dwelling and there's lots of noise hark 
how yon spurs to spirit do incite the princes to their proof. Our sight may win me, and yet may Palamon wound our sight to the spoiling of his figure. Oh, what pity, enough for such a chance. If I were, if I were by, I might do hurt, for they would glance their eyes toward my seat, and in that motion might omit a ward, or forfeit an offense which craved that very time? It is much better. I am not there. Oh, better never born than minister to such harm. What is the chance? So once again, we get her talking about the merits of both men, but it sounds a little bit, a little bit like maybe she's hoping for our sight over Palamon. It feels like when she's talking about Palamon, she kind of has to talk herself into liking Palamon. You know, she says that he has a menacing aspect, but every once in a while, he looks thoughtful or melancholy as if being sad makes him happy and being happy makes him sad, which she finds maybe kind of interesting, kind of mysterious. Um, but then, you know, the trumpets sound as if the, the fight is starting and she's like, you know, our sight could win me. Or Palamon could, could wound our sight in such a way that he's not so pretty anymore. She seems to think that our sight is prettier than Palamon and, and she, she sort of gets that maybe I should go see this, but no, it's better that I'm not there because now she's afraid that she would be a distraction if she was there, like while they're fighting, they might look up and see her and miss it that the other guy's going for his head at that very time. So she's like, no, it's, it's, it's good that I'm here, that I'm not there. But then a servant comes in and she's like, what's going on in there? And it's, it's kind of interesting. We get to, we don't get to see any of the battle. We get to hear about the battle through some servants who come and chat with Amelia throughout the rest of the scene. And I just, I think it's an interesting technique to have this fight that we've been looking forward to for like two acts happen entirely off stage where we don't we don't know what's happening until servants come and tell us what's happening and just to just to feed on that suspense a little more i'm not going to tell you what the first servant says when he comes in to give her a report on the battle until tomorrow because i want you to leave me a comment and tell me who you think is going to win or how you think this fight is going to go like who are you betting on are you a, are you an arsite or are you a palamon anyway i'll see you tomorrow for more and we'll get we'll get into the fight tomorrow i promise i'll see you then Mwah.